Hello Whitney Game Fan, Steam has started to shift towards 4 seasonal sales per year, removing the Halloween and Lunar New Year sales in favour of Spring, Summer, Autumn and Winter, when this sale will be on for one week, with my recommendations beginning with Gato Roboto, a 1-bit metroidvania where you play as a cat, looking visually simple and is a smaller entry, but it is tightly designed and excellent and very cheap, so do pick it up. <laughs> Apologies for the lack of colour, but we continue on with Toem, a wonderful photography adventure game where you set off on an adventure, camera in hand, speaking with and helping various characters with their problems. is light-hearted and very cozy, and simply puts a smile on my face, if you want a title to chill out to, this comes highly recommended. The developer did release a free update in September that included a whole new area named the Besto region with new activities and characters, giving you more bang for your buck. I quite like the pixel art look like platformer metal unit in that while its pixel art is not exactly gorgeous, the action does more than make up for it. You are piloting said metal unit, which is a power suit, harnessing its abilities as you hunt down your treasonous sister, battling all sorts of fools, including aliens along the way. It is relatively underrated, so do give it a go if you have not. Developer Jump Over the Age has really made a name for themselves in the adventure game space with the standout Citizen Sleeper. Wake up, sleeper. Dreaming again? Released earlier this year, where if you have not played their earlier game in other waters, I would recommend that you pick it up. It's an adventure game where you play as a xenobiologist exploring an alien ocean where the story unfolds most interestingly through the use of a radar like map interface. As such, it's a very different kind of adventure game and is quite ingenious in its storytelling as a result, which makes this worth a look. Narita Boy was one of those vaporware titles way back when, having been successfully kickstarted but it took a lot longer than expected to be released, which was why I was pretty excited when it released in 2021. This is an action platformer set in a very 80s representation of the digital world where a hero wields the legendary techno sword and must save the world. Of course, the pixel art is a highlight, although in my opinion, was a downgrade from its initial showing, and while the game isn't perfect, I do think that at 75% off, it's certainly worth checking out.
You're gonna show it to me. I want to see exactly what made you so absolutely great. One of the pleasant surprises from last year is the emotional first-person narrative title Before Your Eyes, where the character's entire life flashes before their eyes in quite a literal fashion. Yes, indeed, it requires you to use your webcam since you interact with the game by blinking your eyes in order to move from one scene to the next. Life can be fleeting, so it's nice to have games like this reminding us of mental mori and will probably bring you to tears. We have to make him do this every birthday. <laughs> That's a great idea. I don't know what I'd do without old Benny. It's Chloe, your neighbor. But understand, I love it. No matter how much you like it, you're not going to be able to stay. All right. Your mother gone. I'm hoping to finally live without all the clutter. It's over. What's going on with Benjamin Brent? You're ashamed of something. Something so terrible, you're trying to blink right past it. Close your eyes, Ben. So I'm gonna ask you again. Well, no matter how painful it gets, I'm gonna send you there to start from the very beginning. I need you to remember and just try to enjoy it this time. There has been somewhat of a renaissance of the CRPG in recent years, led of course by Larian Studios and the Divinity Original Sin games, where an excellent if underrated one of these is Solasta Crown of the Magister. This uses the SRD 5.1 rule set created by Wizards of the Coast who are the D&D people, so the game's mechanics do resemble a tabletop RPG, just converted beautifully into a digital form. It is otherwise very classic fantasy fare with dwarves and elves and dragons where your party of heroes has to stop a world-ending cataclysm from happening, with dungeons to delve into and cities to explore. As such, it's a throwback to games like Neverwinter Nights, but modernized and polished up, being of interest to fans of the genre. One of the more unique entries is Library of Ruina, a roguelite deck building RPG that comes to us from Korean developer Project Moon, who also made the cult classic Lobotomy Corporation, where this has you searching the library for the single perfect book defeating guests as they come in, which turns them into books as well. Yep, you did not hear that wrong, it's quite weird which makes it interesting, not to mention its excellent atypical combat system that allows you to chain attacks together in an interesting way, but this is relatively underrated all things considered. If you have been curious about the Slay the Spire style roguelite deck builder but never took the plunge, I would recommend Monster Train since this is the game that made me fall in love with the subgenre. Hell has frozen over, so you need to escort the last ember of Hellfire to reignite the pyres of Hell while fending off the angelic hosts. There's so much variety in the monster clans and you have to mix and match in every run, with fun mechanics and upgrades to wrap your head around, but this does let you win rather easily at the lower covenant levels which does keep you playing. One of the main highlights of this title is the absolutely gorgeous pixel art where you play as a band of heroes jumping through time and space in order to battle the overwhelming forces of the Imperium, but if you love turn-based RPGs, Star Renegades will be worth a look, having a little bit of Darkest Dungeon DNA and plenty of post-launch support where you can watch this video for more beautiful pixel art titles. 